Welcome back to Moon Harbor Heroes. This is Sword and Sight, Issue 2, The Fractured City. On the cover, a muscular man with wild, unkempt hair holds the sword above a massive pit. Above him, a windmill stands at a slight angle, a bit worse for wear. In the bottom right corner, we see a silver embossed logo in bold letters. Blockade. We turn the page and our story begins. sword and anagram standing up on the like cliff edge looking down over the fractured city and there's this barren field with some craters and scorch marks and a little sign just says minefield ahead we were warned about this by glacier and from there we can see the city itself which is a very anachronistic city like older buildings and near the center of it that sunken windmill we have these uh high walls around and then beyond that a moat um with a drawbridge and we're standing up looking down across this i think the first thing we see from sword is sword clicking off the flashlight hand and putting on his regular right hand and then we get like a look up at this same like glowing green crystal which is, like, high above in the, um, like, there, there's, like, a pretty massive cluster of it, kind of inset in the ceiling above the city. Um, that's kind of giving everything this, like, green glow, um, almost like an artificial sun. Yeah, I like that a lot. And Sword puts his flashlight away and is like, I guess I'm not going to need that. Anagram glances over at Sword and grins and goes, you got a metal detector arm? I'm pointing Sword down at the minefield. So it looks down at the, like, lines and lines of things uh, on his belt, and he's like, lock picking set, flashlight, decryption device, taser, a magnet. A magnet might work. <laughs> Anagram has this just giant grin on her face and, uh, like, looks out over the field and looks, pulls up her glasses. And I think we get a couple panels, like, I think from there we get uh, a panel of um, sword and anagram running across the minefield, like following anagram's instructions, and then a panel of a mine going off and just a crater left, and then we get a panel that's a close up of anagram's face as she puts the glasses back down. And goes, yeah, I, I I'm not confident getting this across. This sword takes his like the right hand off. And puts on, like, a magnet arm. And is like, well, hopefully these things have metal. Because, uh, otherwise, we're gonna die. When I think we start walking across with my hand outstretched. Like, if I feel a pull towards something, we move in the opposite direction. Okay, cool. Uh, I think I'm gonna have you unleash your powers. Great. How's your freak? Minus one. Nice. That's a ten. That's a 10. I did it. Awesome. Uh, give me the panels of us getting across. Uh, I think we're walking and you're following me. We're going pretty slow. I get pulled in one direction, so we like walk the other way. I get pulled in a different direction, so we walk the other way. And I think you stop paying attention for a second because you're looking up at the like glowing green crystal. And you like, I go to turn one direction and you keep walking forward and I like pull you back as we get an explosion like feet away from you. Minor one wouldn't have actually hurt you that it would have hurt you, but it wouldn't have killed you. I like to get the panels of like Claymore grabbing Anagram back and she kind of smirks and just goes, my hero. I think uh, the sword shoves Anagram slightly and is like, all right, keep walking, idiot. And I think in the background of that panels, we start seeing um, some figures up on top of the walls, like tracking our progress. Mm. I don't know if it's close enough to see like details, but we're definitely seeing like a couple figures tracking us on the walls. We are moving pretty slow across this field, and it's pretty open. Mm -hmm. And we just set off one of the mines. Yeah, yeah. I think as we kind of get to the edge of the minefield, we look up and see uh, them. Do you want to describe the Minutemen? Sure. So 
first to describe the minimum, we have to describe the Undernauts. The Undernauts are a race that have lived under the city for a very long time. Um, they have, like, grayed skin, small beady eyes, elongated faces with an emphasis on the nose and the jaw. It's very rat-like. Um, they walk hunched over to accommodate for short and narrow tunnels. And they traditionally aren't taller than, like, 5'6". Uh, they have primarily used, like, pickaxes and shovels as weapons. There's very little electronics down there. The Minutemen are a, like, specialized, trained group of undernauts who are um, beefier, stronger. They are armed with pickaxes, shovels, etc. But they also are proficient with explosions and dynamite. Ooh, can and... I throw in a detail? Please. About the Minutemen uniforms? Yes. I like to think that they're dressed in just various scraps of old military uniforms. Mm, I like that. Like, not one specific type or one specific time period, but it's just all just, like, all of their clothing is military uniforms from various places and times. I love that idea. I think one of the weapons that we see pointed over the wall at us is uh, this, like, crossbow-looking thing, but on the end of it is clearly an explosive. Like, it looks like a tiny, tiny powder keg strapped to the end of an arrow and Excellent. and has it pointed down at us from above us on the wall. And I think we get a panel of like Anagram and Claymore locking eyes. And Anagram goes, this is supposed to be diplomatic, right? Claymore nods. And Anagram looks up at the, the one holding the explosive crossbow, our cut rate Hawkeye, and just goes, Oh, we come in peace. We'd like to talk to your leader. Kind of puts her hands up a little bit. Sword looks at Anagram and rolls his eyes and is like, we are here on a diplomatic mission from Saber. Uh, we are here to speak to Spartacus on behalf of Glacier. I think I'd like you to roll to provoke. Cool. I think their gut reaction is blow up anyone that comes near that they don't know should be here. I think Great. it's to get him to even engage in conversation with you. Great. My superior is not that high. You want to use a team to help me with that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me think how. Can I make a suggestion? Yeah. I think you see him respond and then me start to talk. And but like as I start to talk, I step forward to respond. And as they step forward, he just shoots on sight. And then you, like, pull back and see that that was, like, a future panel. And so, like, as I start to step forward, you grab me and, like, stop me from taking a step forward. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yep, I like it. And I'll spin the team, push it up to a seven. Cool. So on a seven to nine, they can either stumble, air, or overreact. He kind of looks back at the group as the other two. He says to them, um, go notify Spartacus, I'll deal with this. And the two scamper off. And as soon as they're kind of out of sight, he leans down, you know, keeping his crossbow leveled on the two of us and goes, make it worth my while or I'll kill you before he gets here. I look at Anagram and I'm like very quietly like, do you have any money on you? Anagram like runs her hands down the sundress and goes, Sorry, no pockets. The sword is like, and then looks up and is like, just give me one second. And I think that I am in my like saber, like uniform, which is the like very spandexy, slightly bulked up, but spandexy outfit. Mm -hmm. And then I look down at all the stuff on my belt and I'm like, I have this. And I pull off the taser hand that I use. And then like, I, it's like a taser electrical cannon kind of thing. Like it's short range, but like stun blast kind of thing. Oh, let's, let's get like a panel of you showing it off. Yeah. I like hold it up and I'm like this right here. And I turn it away from both Anagram and myself and like kind of just in the distance. And I like look to see where I remember there being a mine. And I like blast a short blast of electricity towards that mine. And so, like, there's electricity, and then the mind explodes. We get a close-up panel of the Minuteman's face with just 
the most genuine smile and just a spark when he in his eyes he goes toss it up toss it up i toss it up he disappears down behind the wall and then a few moments later we hear like a creaking sound as the drawbridge is lowered a bit away so you see us walking in the drawbridge and then um the panel is like a close-up on our feet as we walk like a from like knees down um, and then the next panel shows us walking along like another rickety bridge as we are walking across this bridge towards the windmill. Um, the windmill is probably like, I'm going to say early 1900s, um, mostly wood, some probably steel reinforcement. Leaning to one side, the blades on top are wooden frames with fabric but most of them are ripped and shredded um it does not turn anymore it's purely like aesthetic and as we walk you can see that behind the windmill um and kind of like leaning all around it is this massive just drop and this massive pit so deep that you can't see what's beyond it and then we pull back from this like big exterior shot or we pull back to this big exterior shot showing this like windmill on an island in the middle of the city. And then we pull in on the two of us standing inside the doorway of this windmill. Inside this windmill is this really grandiose, large throne. And sitting on it is a man. The editor's note says uh, Dirk McLean, a.k.a. Spartacus, leader of the Undernauts. He used to be a miner. Uh, he's about 5'8". Um, and he's just this, like, solid wall of muscle. I think he's in, like, a pair of overalls that are, like, pretty beat up. They're, like, green and brown. They were probably khaki at one point, but have faded to this, like, green color now. And doesn't have a shirt on underneath. And he's, like, lounging with one leg up on the arm of the chair one leg like down where a leg should be and he's kind of just like sprawled out across the throne and we get this big booming laugh as he comes in as we come in and he's like well well we got the new saber babies huh welcome to the fractured city kids it's been a long time since any of your type were down here what do you want I think Anagram's going to take another try at the whole diplomacy thing. And she's like, I, I don't know if you know what's going on up on the surface, but it's all kinds of alien invasion up there. And we need to secure the possibility of using your tunnels for evacuation. He gives his big booming laugh and he's like, ah, so Glacier needs my help, huh? How is old Annika? And I think the sword kind of like tightens a little bit and if his sword was a like sword and not attached to his arm we'd see him like tighten his grip but instead his like whole arm just tenses a little bit and he's like glacier is fine she would have come herself but we as you may have heard have pretty massive problem up on the surface and we are dealing with it so she's required up there and spartacus gives another big booming laugh When Spartacus laughs, like, the laughter takes up, like, a third of the page. Very blockish letters, very bold. Not so much, like, Joker laughter, but more like, uh, if Boomy from Avatar The Last Airbender's laugh could be written down. And he leans forward, and he's like, well, uh, old Annika just couldn't afford to come down herself. You know, it'd be uh, a little tough for her to see me after all these years. And then he comes to the throne, and approaches the two of us and he's like so which one of you two is in charge we get i think a panel of anagram looking at sword sword doesn't look at anagram sword knows that he's in charge and the sword puts his hand out and he's like i am i am uh claymore claymore snow hero named the sword and i am here to negotiate as best as i can spartacus gets just the biggest grin uh, looks uh, Claymore up and down and goes, I mean, the age is about right. Maybe I'm your papa. Cl- are we holding hands at this point? Are we shaking hands? Do you have a hand on? I do have a hand on, yeah. 
I don't think so. Um, I think like Claymore's hand is out and Spartacus has like crossed across his chest. I think without even thinking, uh, the sword pulls a fist back and just like punches Spartacus across the face. We cut back to the panel of Spartacus and he uh, turns his head back to face the sword and just we get this big grin. There's a little bit of blood on the side of his face. He just goes, oh, this is going to be fun. And he runs forward, uh, swinging back in a giant punch. So as we see him uh, swinging his punch, um, like his fist coats over with stone as that's flying towards uh, the sword. What do you do? I've got my tower shield on my back and it's set up in such a way that I can like roll it over my head. It's actually like, upside down on my body. Uh-huh. Um, so I like unclick my hand and like let it fly in the air, reach back, click the tower shield into my hand and bring it down in front of me and block his fist with the tower shield. All right. Awesome. Uh, go ahead and roll to defend. Cool. That's an 11. Okay. On a 10 plus, you you uh, keep him safe, and you can either add a team to the pool or clear condition. Just tell me what that panel looks like. I'm going to add a team to the pool because I have no conditions marked. Um, okay, cool. The, and what do you do? The uh, tower shield like rolls over the top of my head and slams into the ground in front of me, and his fist thuds against it, and we get a panel of his fist from the left side, the tower shield split down the middle, and then my face, like, right where his fist was about to hit on the other side. Oh, I love it. I love it. Cool. We then see a panel where, like, it literally slid me back a couple inches across the dirt floor. And as I slide back, the handful of Minutemen who are there all are, like, arming themselves and preparing to jump into attack. And I think that I'm going to pull the tower shield to the side. I think while the tower shield is up, I've dropped the broadsword into the belt and swapped it out for another fist. I feel okay. like this is the fight that I want to do with fists, not swords. And I think um, along the side of this, we get Anagram running towards the Minutemen that we're starting to get riled up, yelling, I'll take care of them, you focus on uh, Spartacus. Perfect. And I'm going to bring my fist around and just clock him in the jaw again. I, I want you to roll to directly engage. Cool. So I'm going to pop in a soldier move here. More than a shield. When you directly engage a threat by heading into danger without regard for your own safety, roll plus savior instead of danger. Okay, cool. On a miss, your focus attack leaves someone in grave danger. The GM will tell you what it takes to keep them safe. I wonder who that's going to end up being. I don't know. That's a five. Do we want to both use team to get that up to a seven? Or do you want to be in grave danger? I'm cool with that. Let's use some team. We have a lot of team. We have a lot of team. Um, So I think, um, like... We get like you swinging, and then uh, we get a panel of you just completely missing, and then getting just decimated in the side of the head with another punch from Spartacus. Mm-hmm. And then we cut back to Anagram's glasses sliding back on, and she like kicks a rock. It bounces off um, like a nearby bit of the wall and hits Spartacus in the head, taking some I attention away. So that moves us up to a six. I think I see that rock coming. And I'm like, Anagram, no, don't get involved. And all the Minutemen turn and put their attention on you because you're getting involved in the fight. Okay. Um, Go ahead and shift your labels. I'm going to shift Savior up and I think Soldier down. That feels like a... um... Yeah. No, I like that. So that is a seven. Cool. one. I was directly engaging. I want to resist or avoid their blows. Okay, cool. Uh, so go ahead and uh, give me the panels with your uh, how this attack looks once it lands. Uh, yeah, so the rock hits him in the face. I yell, anagram, no. And then I bring my fist down and just get him right across the cheekbone. His head whips to the side. This is one of the more like appropriate comics, so we don't see blood splatter, but we do see like him like bring his hand to his cheek. We may see like blood on his hand, but we don't see like a full blood splatter. And I land using the tower shield to like push myself back and like land about five feet back. And then we see this like giant grin come across his face as he like pulls himself back up. And then I think the uh, uh, Minutemen all turn and they all have pickaxes. And I think they come, there's three of them and they uh, in one very fluid motion, like break a stone up from the ground, kick it up into the air and like smack it at you 
almost croquet style. Uh, so there are three rocks coming right at you. Anagram, what do you do? I want to try to deflect the rock, like throw my arm up, knock the rock back, and cause a chain reaction, bouncing, like bouncing around, like hitting a couple of them in the head. Cool. And I have a, like, if this works, I know what the panels look like. Um, are you using your like future sight to figure yeah. out where you want to hit them? Yeah. I'm not Let's sure you want to run that. for that one. Okay. Ooh. That's an 11. Cool. So I think the way this looks is we see the panel with the rock coming at Anagram. And then in the next couple panels, we see Anagram, but like a few steps ahead, we see a like spectral blue version of Anagram, like seeing herself in the future doing these things and just kind of stepping into the. So each panel, she is where the blue, blue ghost image was before. I love that. And we like follow this rock, you know, her deflecting it, it bounces off a bit of a wall and, you know, hits amongst like two of them in the head and kind of uh, they stumble backwards. Phenomenal. Yeah, I think you take two of them down in that moment. Uh, I think there's one more standing, but she's like kind of terrified. It was like, that was not the reaction that people normally get when they fight down here. We see her like grip the um, pickaxe tighter. And I think she's going to get ready to attack you with a pickaxe itself. But I think we jump back to me and Spartacus before we can do that. Spartacus kind of shakes himself off a bit and squares up, pulling up both fists with these massive amounts of stone accumulated on his fist at this point. And uh, it goes, okay, one-on-one, you beat me, I'll open the tunnel. And then runs forward to swing. What are you doing? I'm going to dive under his legs. I'm going to leave the tower shield like it's kind of stuck in the ground right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to leave it there, hopefully, so he runs into it. And then I'm going to come back above, like behind him and swing the flat side of the sword at the side of his head, should the side under his legs work. Cool. I want you to just go ahead and roll directly engage and we'll just kind of decide what comes out of it out of that. Great. I'm going to do the same thing with the more than a shield. Uh, roll plus save here. Okay. That's a seven. All right, pick one. I'm going to resist or avoid the blows again. Okay, go ahead and uh, narrate how that looks then. Uh, yeah, so uh, he's running towards me. He's running fast, but he's also a very like aggressive person. He's not like the most cautious. His legs are kind of like, I'm not going to say bounding off the ground, but there's enough space that as he gets close, I dive underneath him right as he's about to get to me and his fists slam into the shield. I then come up and have clicked the broadside of the sword, or the sword to my hand, and just come up and smack him across the head with the broadside of the sword. Excellent. I like that. I'm going to add one bit of detail. When he punches against the shield, it sends, like, a crack through the stone, like, a bit of the, like, floor just shifts down several feet. Oh, I love that. Uh, and then um, he brings his stone hands up behind his head and slams them on where I was literally one panel earlier, but I've ducked out of the way. Um, Excellent. And then and uh, like on that same here, slam, it's like crack where my head just was. Excellent. We get the same like, cracks. Moved, I think that would have killed me. We get the same like cracks uh, extending out there. And um, I think like, at this point, like a significant chunk of the floor just starts to fall away down to uh, the kind of cavern down below. Yeah. And I mean, we're not too far from the pit. So hypothetically, we could probably make it our make our way over to the pit. Um, I'm, I'm good with just. I just want. I just want some destruction here. Cool. And then he is going to turn and uh, you know run at you again, swinging wildly. You want to cut here to the last little bit with anagram in this thing. Yeah, I think that sounds great. We see the last thing we saw was the minute man, minute woman, but minute man's uh, hands tighten on her pickaxe, and we see you two kind of squaring off. She's not rushing at you. She's kind of like very like almost opposite ends of a field kind of look, but you're not too far apart. And then she swings the pickaxe over towards the wall as hard as she can. And she grabs like with the curved edge of the pickaxe, grabs a chunk of that moss and flings it at your face. What do you do? Oh, I'm just going to try to like, I want to try and roll under it. I want to get close enough to her. I want to try and restrain her, but not hurt. Cool. Let's directly engage a threat there. Cool. On a 7 to 10, choose one. I want to take something from her, that being her mobility. Great. Narrate how that happens. 
Uh, I think I try to uh, dive out of the way of this moss. I'm pretty sure it just hits me. Am I correct in that? Yeah. And then I just keep a jump at her and just like pin her. Like, I don't know, just a, a grab transition behind, like hold her arms up. Uh, phenomenal. The moss like a headlock hits you. style thing. There we go. And for a moment, it doesn't feel like it did anything. And then you grab her and hold her. And as you're holding her, your glasses slip ever so slightly. Uh, so you can see over them. And you see that monstrous glacier from earlier. Can you distra- describe what glacier as a monster looks like? I think we haven't seen a clear image of it yet. And if you're okay with it, I'd like to keep it like very, very abstract and vague. Like we're just seeing like whenever it's shown, it's just like two tone images, more symbolic than actual how it is. Perfect. Are you cool with that for now? I love that. So you see that like two tone glacier monster from earlier. It's pretty much just this like white blur. Uh, and your vision has been this like blue and maroon kind of colors. This is glowing white, stark white. And you see this monster and you see this like future vision of Glacier as the monster cleaving. You don't know, it's not like graphic, but we just see uh, Claymore standing in front of Glacier and Glacier just knocks Claymore to the ground. And we see another panel of the sword going clattering along the floor. And then it slowly dissipates from that like maroon color and fades out to nothing. Can you go ahead and roll to take a powerful blow for me? Yeah, if you if you hadn't asked, I was gonna ask. It's an eleven. Yep. I'm gonna remove myself from the situation. Okay. I run. I just turn and run. Drop what I'm doing and I'm I'm running back towards where we came from. Great. I think that you you let go of the person with the pickaxe or the, yeah. the Minuteman. Yeah. I think the Minuteman is really confused and is like, uh I'm not and like isn't sure whether to chase you or to not chase you. And so we get a moment of like the Minuteman looking confused. And then we jump back over to Claymore and uh, Spartacus. Spartacus. And then we, yeah, we've got Spartacus just fuming in anger, barreling down towards uh, Claymore. What do you do? By the way, I this fight scene is setting like Claymore up as a badass. Yeah, I don't think I see that Anagram has run away. Yeah, it feels right to me. Uh, I think, like, my back is to Anagram. We see Anagram in the distance running off, but we don't see... Like, she's not gone yet. Or, uh, I don't see that. As he comes towards me with the stone fists, I want to take the sword and, like, essentially hold the sword like it's a shield and just, like, deflect the fists away. And ideally knock him off his balance and knock him to the ground. I think, mechanically, the only way you can do that is if you make this an attack. Like, to knock him off his ba- off his balance. That sounds right. So do you want to directly engage? Yeah, let's do it. And again, we're going to... Actually, I think this one I am considering my safety for. I don't think I can roll more than a shield. Yeah. So this isn't going to be pretty. I believe in you. That's a four. Okay, so um, I think he punches straight into the shield. And the shield like gets pushed back into your face and you just get knocked across the room. Uh, go ahead and roll to take a powerful blow. Cool. That's a nine. What would you like to do? I'm going to give ground and give him an opportunity. As you're laying on the ground, trying to pull yourself up, um, Spartacus walks over, grabs you by your collar and just holds you out. out. Um, is there windows in here? Oh, wait, we have, uh, a, we have the floor. Yes, there is. Part uh, before of it. we do that, yeah. Uh, I'm going to say that I had time to closely observe my opposition before the fight. Yeah, we should have rolled that before, but yeah. I'm going to roll plus savior. Cool. And get that hold. Good call. Totally forgot about that. On a miss, I hold mark a one. Mark condition, hold one. Cool. I think I'm going to mark angry. Yeah, that works. He was insulting my mom earlier. So he grabs me. I'm going to escape any bindings or impediments they attempt to place on me and get out of his... Uh, Oh, can I have him hold you over the pit first? Then you do that? Absolutely. Okay, yeah. So he grabs you by the collar and just swings you out so you're hanging over the uh, the the pit and says, you think you can defeat me and goes to drop you. And I think we get the moment of... Uh, I'm still connected to the sword, but uh, what we get is 
I kind of swing my weight um, using the sword as a counterbalance, counterweight. And I like swing myself. So I swing up over his shoulder and then I cut the shirt that I'm wearing. Cut the like. Oh, yeah. No, it's like a deep V neck. Yeah, it cuts free of the uh, his grip. And I flip over his head and land in a perfect three point stance. uh, Right hand on the ground and the blade drawn pointed at him. He spins to to meet you. What do you do? I I say, I don't want to kill you. I'd like to make an alliance without destroying your entire city. Good and roll to provoke. If I have to. Oh, am I provoking? I think so. Do you think he's susceptible to my words? Yeah, I think so. Cool. That's an eight. Sorry, go ahead and finish your speech. I say, but if I have to, I will. He tenses for a moment, kind of brings his fists back up. And then he puts them down. He goes, you've made some good points. Until this is taken care of, I can open some tunnels. I'm going to stand, and I still have the sword connected. I'm not going to disconnect it, but I'm going to be like, thank you. And as I walk up, I'm going to put my hand out and be like, sir, I very much appreciate that. He kind of like shakes himself off a bit, puts a big, raucous hand on your shoulder and goes, of course, it's beneficial to my people. Tell Glacier uh, to let me know when she's ready for another round. I tense a little bit, and then I shake it off, and I'm like, you have a mean right hook there. And we get the booming laughter, and the booming laughter carries over to the black panel. Moon Harbor Heroes is produced by Anthony Sheets and T.P. Hugh, and edited by Anthony Sheets. Anthony can be found on Twitter at Icy New Year or at IcyNewYear.com. T is the host of Incubator On Air, a new play podcast available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Google Play. They can be found at T. Playwright on Twitter or TP 94 on Instagram. Anagram was played by me, Anthony Sheets, and the sword was played by TP Huth. Music for this issue was Hitman by Kevin McLeod. A link to the license and his website will be in the show notes. Our logo was designed by Beautiful Beasties. She can be found on Instagram at beastly.doodles or on Patreon at patreon.com slash beautifulbeasties. If you want to get a hold of us, email us at moonharborheroes at gmail.com or on Twitter at moonharborcast. If you enjoyed this issue, please consider leaving us a review on iTunes and recommending it to friends. Word of mouth is really the best way for us to bring these stories to more people. And uh, thanks for helping us save the world. We'll see you next issue.